What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Cloud Slayer Podcast. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today, I have a special guest, um, buddy from work here, uh, Mr. Philip Barton. What's up, buddy? <laughs> hey, man, it's been cool to finally sit down with you and be able to chat. Uh, yeah, just because you know we only ever only ever have our brief interactions at work, so it's nice to just sit down. Right, absolutely. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you today. And uh, hit me up on the email if you wanted to sh- uh, share some experiences with like UAP stuff and yeah. whatnot. Um, you know, where, where does like UAP stuff start for you? Like, was it just like Scooby Doo or something? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, probably when, when you're a lot younger, you're like, oh, aliens, that'd be so cool. And you, you hear about UFOs and there are all these UFO sightings and what, these old, old pictures, but and then you get older and you're like, yeah, maybe there, maybe there's nothing there. And, and you know, maybe we are all alone in the in the universe or whatnot. And, right. uh, but I, I think a lot of people have experiences throughout their life that kind of maybe change their mentality about not just necessarily maybe there's other life out there so much as like maybe there are people on earth parties on earth who have access to technology uh the development of technology that we just don't comprehend yeah and because, uh, maybe because they hide it from the general public yeah, or something yeah like that. Uh, just you see inevitably if, if you see enough things if you experience enough things in life you're going to experience some things that leave you really puzzled mm-hmm. uh, and and you, it's easy to write stuff off as as magic or you know whatnot but or like, somebody on drugs <laughs> yeah but, but it's like maybe there really is sufficiently advanced technology and and understanding of the way the fabric of reality works better than how the, the common person understands it right now mm-hmm. and um yeah like that that kind of stuff is fun to talk about fun to yeah. fun to explore so absolutely when um so would you say you're more of a believer now than you maybe were when you were younger or something? Uh, like, I, I don't know that I believe in like aliens. I don't mm-hmm. know if I do. Um, mm-hmm. That's jury's out. Uh, the universe is a big place. Uh, just our galaxy is a big place. The, the whole universe is a whole much, much bigger. Like, right. you, can't, you can't even conceptualize that. You can't even think about how big it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so the possibility that there's like alien life out there sure uh but even even the people like gene roddenberry star trek and creating <laughs> creating this whole he created a galaxy right Absolutely. not a universe right. like he in, in his in his envision in the whole star trek galaxy was they're never even able to leave the galaxy <laughs> um they're and they're just exploring and exploring and exploring and, and um so even someone who's like a firm at, at least conceiver of the of the idea that there are many many potential other alien life forms still couldn't conceive of exiting our own galaxy right right and like right now we're let's face it we're not even no, no, our no. farthest like satellites not even really that yeah. that far out of our own uh, uh our own star's orbit so it's right and we can't even like explore all of our ocean and stuff like yeah, that right? yeah there's some depths mm-hmm. that we can't even really reach oh yeah especially well Physically, I suppose, but you might be able to send machinery somewhere. But mm-hmm. uh, it's, 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 that's also scary to think about too. That you know the ocean's that deep, and you know, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that that uh, uh, sub recently was trying to go down to the Titanic and just got crushed, just destroyed. And, and just thinking about the forces at play and just trying to explore that kind of area, like the level of technology you need just to do something like that. Right. And even like NASA for preparing space exploration stuff, they have their, um, their big, uh, uh, that f- like 40 foot pool down mm-hmm. in Houston where they do the, uh, spacewalk, like uh, trials. And stuff, yeah. Right? Uh, I went and saw that one time and, and like, that's, uh, my, my uh, brother who, who works in aerospace, he was telling me at that time, uh, they have design competitions and people will design little, like drones to go down underwater mm-hmm. and uh he says the the majority of them end up being crushed by the immense pressure at yeah. 40 feet uh, that that yeah just trying to go farther down than that try to go a mile down oh. like the pressure is is unfathomable for for most people like the numbers don't make sense right absolutely i mean 
uh, my first time I got, uh, I, I kind of like crossed my mind. Like before that, I didn't think about anything about the deeper you go, the more pressure it applies on like mm-hmm. your drums or something like that. But uh, it wasn't until like middle school that I realized that uh, we, we, we really can't go that deep. <laughs> so I'm like a 10 foot pool and went to the bottom and you put your head down to the bottom. And it was like, yeah, my head's like, going to implode. Like, <laughs> like, holy crap, yeah. you might pass out or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you're like, dang, and people actually train like this. And like, you, you kind of make fun of them because we, growing up, they'd always have like, they, they'd show like people in the NASA suits underwater doing that in those training facilities and <laughs> stuff like that. And you're like, oh man, they must be like little chickens or something. You're like, what's this? They can't even handle that underwater. But <laughs> then you go and do that. You're like, oh man, I'm just tacking up the butt, you know? Yeah. So. yeah. And they go the opposite way, go up into space and like a vacuum and, <laughs> and just the technology needed for anything to be up there and to think like, I mean, how high can you go up? On, on a mountain before you're just like, oh, my heart, you know? Right, because <laughs> <laughs> right? you see those people, they get like panic attacks and stuff like that yeah. up there. And people die, you know, yep. every year, right? Uh, uh, quite a few, anyway, so. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you think, then you also think about like some of these other like tribesmen and they're living up there in some, some mountain Yeah, area. like the Sherpas in, <laughs> in Nepal and stuff. Yeah, they're just like, What's wrong? This is like a Sunday stroll. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't break a sweat yet. What's wrong with this guy? Let's just push him down the hill. <laughs> but, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, crazy but, stuff. Uh, you may mention um, through the messages that you had uh, UAP experiences yourself. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, so you talked you talked a bit about yours, and yours is very different from mine, uh, mm-hmm. and that's that's really cool. Like I, I'm always, I always have my ears open for other people uh, who, who. I can kind of assess like in good faith, like, I think you're telling the truth yeah. that, 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 um, that this wasn't like a, a drug field experience yeah. or, or you're just like, I saw some really crazy stuff, you know, like, yeah. because there are people out there like that. Right. Absolutely. And so I'm always, always, uh, on the lookout for people who have had some kind of experience like that because, uh, I think culturally it's not, it's not like necessarily a safe thing for us to talk about them. Mm-hmm. And when people, someone does say, you know, this, crazy thing happened hmm. and you kind of make that assessment. Like, I think this person's being on the level with me. Mm-hmm. Um, like I want to hear more about that. And I, I feel safer also being able to say, and I also saw some things that I'm not going to chalk it up to aliens. I'm not going to chalk it up to you, whatever, but it's, unexplainable. but it's, but it's stuff that it didn't make any sense to me in that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, it hasn't made sense to the uh, aviation people I've talked to, like pilots and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense to them. And like, they gave me like the raised eyebrow, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. What are you on, man? And, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, to just be able to talk about those things and be honest about them and, and not be like, ah, uh, that just sounds, sounds bizarre. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's good to have, have those outlets. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know if you want to recap yours and then and then I'll jump into mine just uh, for, yeah. Yeah, uh, all right. Um, mine was, we'll do a, a short recap. Of, it was like right down the street here pretty much. Uh, so we were coming up Northern School there. Um, we were coming up to the hill right before the like, cemetery and stuff like that. Um, we didn't have a Dollar General there at the time, but um, it was like right above the tree lines. You could, it was, it was a great distance away. It didn't look that big. It, was, it looked like a like a ball of fire, just the maybe an asteroid or something. You know, you never know. And like, oh, huh, that's kind of weird. But it went like super fast. But it went disappeared in the tree line as we were coming up the hill. So we, by the time we got to the um, the cemetery, that thing had already vanished off in the distance, and it appeared to be. But uh, we ended up coming over the hill because um, my parents they live. Uh, you end up turning down the road up there, I think it was Grove Street or something like that. So they only live about two miles down here, right? So we're going down there, uh, we're about to take a, uh, take the turn, and then we see the, it was like way closer, and I don't know, it looked like, as I explained it, it was probably a good football field size away from, um, from where we were. Uh, but it was probably twice as high as the tree line, but it looked like a giant ball of fire. And it, we're looking at this thing, and it's like just shining a ray of light. So it was, it was pretty strong. It, even though we're, we were sitting in the vehicle, you could you could feel that uh, energy coming in at you. And you're like, I'm just like, holy crap, what is this? You know, and my, I can see my dad starting to panic. I'm like, what the hell? And 
because my dad's a big guy too, you know, he's a six yeah. four and he's freaking 265 pounds at the time too. And he's like, if this guy's scared, I should probably be scared too, you know? <laughs> but uh, I'm also not that, that small of a guy neither. So I was, I was probably pushing the same weight as hell. And I'm like, dude, there's, we're, we're, we're after if anything happens, you know, just <laughs> if there are aliens, but, or even if it was a, uh, something with the advanced life forms but i don't know anything that would just be like a big ball of pure energy type thing you know and, yeah but as soon as we see it uh it's it stood still at first when we first seen it for it seemed like it seemed like minutes but it was only seconds right uh because the adrenaline was going uh the heart was beating and oh man it felt like your my face was on fire so but then that thing ended up taking off it was like almost impossibly fast from a standstill like that especially in the air you know yeah but i guess it could have been moving because you, you see some of these other guys are like okay it could have been like the trajectory of it but uh, and it might play an illusion might show that you know they're, they're staying still but actually they're moving maybe at the same uh, rate you are or something like that yeah but then it takes off or something but that's still it was like for something to accelerate almost instantly and then mm -hmm. take off like that it was you know, I, I I can't I can't explain it or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So, and it was very scary. We get home and my dad's locking the door. So like, I don't, <laughs> dude, I don't think that lock's gonna keep them out if they decide to come here. So, <laughs> so no, that was pretty much it. That was the only UAP thing that I've ever experienced or uh, stuff like that. I remember I'd always want to. Uh, aliens to be real. I wanted to see them and stuff like that as a kid, you know, just yeah. Scooby Doo and all these things like that. So, <laughs> but they just pulled the mask off and like it's old man McMurray <laughs> from up the street. <laughs> yeah, pull that. Oh, it's just my little brother. <laughs> uh, but so, so what I found really neat is that well, when I when I saw your video explaining that. Um, I had already been aware or been made aware uh, by so Amanda's uh, aunt is kind of cl her close thing to to a, to a mom, mm -hmm. uh, and she lives on Mobile Lake, okay. and uh, she had told us that there were regular uh, UAP sightings mm -hmm. uh, on Mobile Lake uh, all throughout. So she lived. She had lived there most of the time since her teens and now she's like in her mid 60s okay. so she's been up on that lake for a good long while yeah, and uh has described uh or referenced other people who have lived on the lake also for a very long time all describing very similar things to what you did mm -hmm. um, and they're usually out over the lake um but uh that that struck you know kind of struck me and stuck out to me uh, right away is that i've heard the description of the the balls of fire and, and everything yeah. and it's all been like right here <laughs> and and then uh, she had also said uh so her her aunt had said uh, uh that there were m many sightings uh, enough so that it was written up in evidently in the bemidji pioneer or whatever the newspaper was at that time uh uh at least once, probably multiple times, there were like multiple sightings that were being reported, and uh, that's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> it's like validation, right? Like, Absolutely. hey, I saw I saw something that other people were also seeing, and not just. And like, you had you had family with you at the time, also, which is another level of like. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't just see it myself. Yeah, and it's like, not like yeah, my brain made it up. Like we all just saw that, right? <laughs> and and that's that was a. Uh, uh, so I'll tell you my, my two stories. That was the frustration for me is that it was just me. Mm -hmm. So the first time I was like, what did I just see? <laughs> and, and then, you don't you don't talk about it because it was, it was just me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, the yeah, second, the second time it, it was just me who saw it. I was with someone else and I couldn't get them to turn around quickly enough to see what I was seeing. And that I want, I wanted to punch the guy afterward. I'll, I'll get into that. Um, so yeah, two times I've seen things, not balls of fire. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, both times, uh, I, be I believe it to be the same style of, of, uh, UAP. Okay. Um, was it like the saucer leg or like triangular lights and big, stuff? Cause big triangle, big triangle. Yeah. And so it's a crazy experience. So, so I used to go to concerts in, I was living in, uh, Crookston, 
and then also Grand Forks, North Dakota at kind of during a certain stretch of time. Okay. And um, I would go to concerts pretty regularly in Grafton. I don't know if you know where Grafton is, but it's it's like 40 to 50 minutes north, north, west of Grand Forks. Okay. So um, if you follow Highway 2 across, uh, a little up on like yeah, like Interstate 29 and, and then like 10 miles off of I-29. Okay. Um, and so I was coming back from a concert and uh, it was, it was a good night, had a fun time, driving back, just me, driving my 93 Ford Taurus at the time. <laughs> nice. And um, uh, it wasn't like a winter night. It was it was either uh, early enough in the spring that it was still cold, crisp nights or mm -hmm. late enough in the fall that it was cold, crisp nights. I wish I'd kind of written down dates mm -hmm. and whatnot, but I was on I-29. So I was driving south on the interstate. Mm -hmm. I was not the only car on the interstate, yeah. but it was late enough that you know, traffic is kind of sparse and already it's, it's the, close to the Minnesota North Dakota border. It's not like there's a ton of traffic anyway, aside from there's a lot of semi traffic, I guess, uh, up towards that Winnipeg and whatnot. Right. But um, uh, driving back, it was probably no later than midnight, maybe 1230. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just cranking music in my car, driving along and Paying close attention as I'm driving, but I see off to my uh, off to my left, which would be to the east, mm -hmm. um, these three red lights in a you know in in a triangle, and mm -hmm. then with a, a white spotlight sweeping Sweet. in the okay. center. And um, was it pretty close to the ground, or was it pretty high up? So, so yeah, that's the crazy thing. Uh, I. I just thought, wow, this is neat. Like this is going to fly right overhead. So I pulled over my vehicle mm -hmm. on the side of the road and watched. Uh, so I was at a standstill. I wasn't like trying to watch out the window while I drove. Right, right. Uh, I just stopped and watched. And um, and I thought, gosh, what, what? This is moving kind of slow. Um, this maybe it's like a formation of helicopters. Mm -hmm. uh, they're they're in this, you know. They've got their because I know the aircraft either fly, um, uh, both civilian and military fly either with their uh, well, civilian has to fly with the lights on, mm -hmm. and it's the three lights on each. They've got the red, uh, and then they might have white and green, I think it is, or white and, and like a flashing one, too. Red, I think the flashing is the red, I red think one. that's right. But then they have, like the one color signifies one side of the plane, and the other is, or one side, you know, one wing and the other wing. Okay. Uh, but then, military craft, I have learned, or I've been told by, by a former military pilot, either fly with the same light configuration <laughs> or no lights, like there is no different light configuration for military aircraft. Okay, uh, I, I've taken that as. As truth, I, I haven't verified that. It was from a military pilot, career military pilot. So mm -hmm. I just kind of took that as, okay. Um, gotcha. But I should probably look that up and be yeah. double sure. I, I think Cody, you know, Cody, your boss. Yeah. Uh, he, he flew in the military too. He okay. was a fly boy. So he might know a little bit of that if we asked him too. Even. Yeah. But um, uh, so I'm, I'm watching, I'm thinking, okay, I didn't know at that time about the the lights. I thought, well, maybe there's like a formation of aircraft here and uh, one one in the center that's got this spotlight. I don't know what the spotlight's for. I don't know. And it was sweeping back and forth. It wasn't like just just mm -hmm. a, uh, a singular light. Um, and it was a spotlight. Like there was a point of light moving around on the ground. But this is it's kind of, you don't see things like this. It's really strange. Right. And it starts to get closer and closer. And I'm thinking, this... I should be hearing things by now. Like I should be hearing the uh, propellers from a helicopter Absolutely. and I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm pulled over at the side of the road. Yeah. Uh, I'm at a stop and I'm, I'm watching and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I realized it's one thing. I can see the silhouette <laughs> and it's a big triangle with the red lights on each corner and the white light in the center that's sweeping back and forth. How big do you think that thing was? Oh. So this is the wild thing. Uh, I It flew directly over me. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is the part that my I can't wrap my mind around mm -hmm. is that I don't believe it was more than 100 feet off the ground. 
first of all. So I that's should have been cool. able to hear something if there was something to hear uh, because it was that close. But the other part of that, like, I don't think it was more than 100 feet off the ground. It was almost like a football field long. And I can't wrap my mind around that. So, like, I think, well, okay, well, maybe it was, like, closer than 100 feet. That doesn't make sense. (laughs) And then, well, if it was farther away than 100 feet, then the size makes even less sense because it would be massive. Right. And so, it's some. Maybe my eyes are playing tricks on me, maybe whatever. But like up to that point where I saw the silhouette, I was like, it's, it's gotta be a couple helicopters flying together. And that, that would make sense as they're getting closer and closer that this, this formation is getting bigger and bigger, but no, it was one solid thing. And my mind, I could not and still can't wrap my mind around how massive it was. Right. That's, oh man, that's crazy to think about. Just like you just see a giant freaking football field above you and stuff. Yeah. What was running through your mind when that stuff was happening? Like, oh, <laughs> what man. was running through my mind was, I don't know why other cars aren't stopping <laughs> because they're passing me on, yeah. on the interstate. They're zipping past. And like I said, it, it's like 12, 1230 at night. Not mm-hmm. a lot of cars, but I wasn't the only car out there. And why is it that nobody else is stopping to look at this thing? Because right. this is, there's no way I'm the only one seeing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and it flew, it, it was so low, it was moving so slowly, like the cars on the interstate were moving faster than it was moving. Okay. So um, my using that as kind of my, my reference or estimation, like, okay, the cars on the, on the interstate are moving between 70 and 75 in, in North Dakota. And some were pushing up to 80. Um, yeah, especially at nighttime. The yeah, especially at nighttime. And I'm thinking if it was as low as I think it was, think it was Mm -hmm. then it wasn't moving more than 30 miles per hour Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of this lazy (laughs) lazy stroll across the across the interstate and the whole time the the spotlight sweeping back and forth it's all farmland out there so it's just big fields and the spotlight sweeping back and forth but um uh it, it crossed uh so it's onto the west side of the interstate so i'm looking off to the right side of my vehicle because it was straight over me so i'm leaning forward looking out the windshield and watching this go over and it continues on and it's all over farmland and then it just starts to speed up and just goes and like never heard a sound never oh, heard a sound and uh and then when once it started to speed up it's just you know, the, the lights are moving away so fast and that would have been like 2000 maybe 2001 2001 so that was that's, a while that's ago. 20 22 years ago right mm-hmm. um and that was one of those things that i was like i i have no way to like give credibility like type <laughs> thing i guess to it but yeah well, like, at that point at that point i'm like well i'm a i'm a college age person who's doing all this driving around at night and oh he and just came back from a concert came back from a concert yeah. and like but at that time like i didn't i didn't drink i didn't do any drugs i didn't there was nothing um wild about my life other than i went out to to concerts and had fun right. and um which is this for some people it's hard for them to believe people do that you know? yeah, like, yeah there's no way yeah <laughs> it's like you were on something <laughs> uh, but um but um no well that's even funnier because i not too long following that, uh, I was I had been working in East Grand Forks mm-hmm. and commuting to and from Crookston all the time, and so not long after that, within within a year or two of that, uh, I was coming back from East Grand Forks to Crookston during the during the winter, mm-hmm. and um, it was a really cloudy night, and so on those really cloudy nights out in the re- uh, rural areas, it's you have all the white snow on the ground the clouds up above and all the light from the cities keeps everything kind of silhouetted really nicely. So even if, if, even if there's not a lot of starlight and whatnot, if the clouds are low enough, the lights from the cities will reflect that uh, uh, kind of, kind of create a a bit of an atmosphere as far as a pretty distinctive lighting atmosphere there. Um, I was driving back at like three in the morning because I did some really late night it work. Yeah. And uh, IT never sleeps, by the way. Yeah, never, never <laughs> sleeps. So I was, I was coming back really late, and um, the whole sky lit up. 
<laughs> and so so it was like it was like someone flipped a switch right like mm -hmm. it's nighttime driving along and then boom the lights are on and it was all from above the clouds Jeez. and i got back to i got back to crookston and the next morning um or for like lunchtime i met up with my mom we went to pizza hut in crookston <laughs> when it was still there and we met up and um and I'm telling her like, oh, I saw this, it was wild. You know, drive, I was coming home and it was like someone flipped on the lights and the whole sky lit up and it was on for like five seconds. And then the Flip switch the again and everything went back to normal. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. And since it was such a cloudy night, mm -hmm. like the behind the clouds was fully lit up and looked like the whole sky was lit up. And <laughs> and my, my mom was convinced that that I must have been doing drugs. I must have been drinking. She got really concerned for my mental health, but she didn't tell me any of this. Instead, she went and she visited with her her uh, boss. She was working at the university, and her boss um, had a, has like a background in counseling and, and, <laughs> and psychology and all these oh, things. And man. she's like, "I'm so concerned for my son," and um, and uh, she's telling him all the things that I just that I just told her. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I was listening to the radio station this morning. A lot of people were calling about that." <laughs> And it turned out it was it was um, uh, a meteorite oh, uh, entering sure. the atmosphere, and it had it had been large enough that as it streaked through the atmosphere, it, you know they're burning up, mm -hmm. and it just makes all that light behind the clouds. Oh shoot! And so, so my, my mom was like, "Oh, I guess my son's okay." <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, dear, I thought you were on yeah, drugs. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were on drugs or <laughs> having a mental breakdown or something. Right. But um, no, so, so obviously not not a UAP thing, but just like this, the wild things. That, that you can see if you're if you're looking for them mm -hmm. and um, and like on the one hand at the time I saw it and I'm like what is that and then there was an explanation for it like mm -hmm. a, a pretty straightforward explanation for it and um, so I thought long and hard about the the UAP that I saw back in like 2001 2002 right right uh, like what what could that be and I don't know if you're aware but like in Cavalier North Dakota is like a big radar base mm -hmm. and in uh uh it's like 15 minutes west of grand forks the grand forks air force base mm -hmm. um there there are a bunch of military things and they're all over north dakota yeah. the nuclear missile silos and everything else like there's a lot of military stuff mm -hmm. and and so that's kind of where my mind goes right away i'm like this could be like um you know lockheed martin skunk works <laughs> proving stuff out with the with the air force or right. you know, uh some some aspect of the military and or doing some testing and whatnot mm -hmm. and like that's where my mind goes i'm like i i think it uh, in that context starts to make more sense that there's advanced technology that's like so advanced yeah. that we don't want even american citizens to know that it's something that that we're testing out because right. the only thing that was silent was like those stealth helicopter or stealth stealth jets right that they had that kind of undetectable the like radars and all that jazz but yeah they just uh retired those guys too right yeah so they, mm -hmm. i'm sure they have like more advanced technology than oh, yeah. that to yeah. retire that guy so yeah and well like the super crazy thing is so i started making inquiries right away about like what's the slowest moving aircraft what's you know what can fly the slowest and and whatnot and um uh I wasn't getting good feedback as far as from all the aviation nerds at, at UND because yeah. it's all like the big aviation program. They're like, what you described, like, no, there, there aren't any planes and they can all rattle off all these different planes that are, this is the biggest plane. This is the, this is the slowest moving plane or can fly the slowest without needing a headwind and, and yeah. you know, rattle off all the stats and, and everyone's got their top 10 list of coolest planes they'd want to fly and <laughs> all that, all that stuff. And, but any, any time I talk to an aviation, uh, an aviation major, cause I was at, at UND, mm -hmm. if I talked to an aviation major and, and just tried to engage them about that, they would just be like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like you, there is nothing like that that you're describing right right especially if it could have been further out or closer and stuff like that yeah yeah because it's further out it's even bigger and yeah. if it's closer then it's moving like even even slower right and it's almost impossible to get something like that to move through the air silently you know mm -hmm. so it's like oh geez. yeah and and like if there's if there's some kind of special aerodyna aerodynamics at play where it's just forcing a lot of air beneath it mm -hmm. or something while it moves then like shouldn't there be some kind of like, like ground effects or something uh, uh that uh that those aerodynamics at play um uh, that uh that i would perceive through seeing how 
like the crops are moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess it would have been like it had to have been late enough in the spring or no late enough in the fall that there was still what winter wheat that mm-hmm. must have been it. Okay. That would make that would make the most sense. But like that low enough to the ground, you would think you'd be seeing some kind of aerodynamic effects, some kind of disturbance of what's beneath it. Okay. Um, if if there were some kind of propulsion like that keeping it up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just where's the sound? Where's the disturbance to to everything around it? Like this doesn't does it make any sense? Doesn't make any sense. Oh um, yeah, right. Um, yeah, that, uh, I don't know. That's that is that's unfathomable because mostly because you're not there too, right? And stuff like that. So I mean, I'm not going to say you're lying or anything, obviously, because people could say that about me too, right? And stuff <laughs> like that. So, but. Um, Sometimes some shit happens in people's lives and you're just never going to be able to explain it. You yeah. know, like maybe they'll be able, to be able to explain it a hundred years from now, maybe if it reveals itself, you yeah. know, or yeah. something. But, oh man, like a just big old floating triangle. It's, I don't know. Well, it's like when, when I, when I think about it, I think like it, uh, it pushes me to think more about what's the what's the state of the art for for propulsion that we have now Mm -hmm. it's like jet engines and and state of the art aerospace like rocket engines and whatnot like we need propellant we've got to burn stuff to be able to move absolutely and like that's not what i was seeing and so i think uh there there's so much greater depth to our understanding of the laws of the universe Mm -hmm. than like if someone has already figured this out, like some human mind has figured this out and that's what I'm seeing, which I'm not ready to jump to aliens, yeah. you know, like, but, uh, but I, I am, I'm also not willing to rule it out. Mm-hmm. But I, I think what I saw was uh, a terrestrial thing. I don't think it was a human, human made thing. Right. But, uh, oh. uh, if someone figured it out, like, someone else can figure it out too. Absolutely. And so that's like, well, they're always trying to like reverse engineer some of the UFOs that they did get. Right. And yeah. I, I heard a lot about that. Like there's that interview with that guy who, who uh, uh, claims to have been uh, abducted or something. Uh, no part of the research oh, where, where yeah. they had like, everything was siloed and wasn't that Mike Baker guy. Was I think so. It was like a video from the eighties or something uh-huh. and nineties. And, and, and he has like a, three hour long interview or something where (laughs) where he like details all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's, it's wild. But yeah, even all the research in the, for the military and in the military, I'm sure is super siloed to the point where people just don't know. Like like Oppenheimer came out. I don't think anyone's willing to do that again. Like just put everyone in the same room and have them figure it out. (laughs) No, no, we'll make sure no one else knows what the next guy's working on. And right. right. Yeah. But it's, well, because the, they're they're having more and more pilots going out and uh, saying that they're seeing stuff and be more open about it. Yeah. But, or they they were saying like probably ninety five percent of pilots are actually seeing things, but they don't say anything because yeah, there's a stigma. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They, you know, then people could just say other things too that kind of um, uh, went through a lot of G's up in space and stuff like that because it can make you start to hallucinate when you're up there yeah. too, right? Mm-hmm. Or you reach the point of passing out is what you know they say like normal folks like us probably pass out around like 5g's or something like that because we're untrained and stuff like that yeah. that's yeah i don't know it's it's pretty crazy it's like uh well i it, it sucks because you know like it, we make people feel like they can't speak about their actual experience and stuff like that yeah. without being or with being judged and stuff like that yeah. so it's like well, you can't you shouldn't just discredit them for that uh for yeah just because you don't believe in that or you just don't want to hear it or something like that. Yeah. And so, so the really cool thing about like the UAP reports from the, from the military is that it's not just the, you know, the accounts from trained observers, mm-hmm. which is I think validating in and of itself, people who are, are considered to be trustworthy and, and psychologically stable enough to be put in control of very expensive uh, uh, craft. Right. But beyond that, like the targeting systems and having the video captured and having some of those things kind of entered into the, the public record that, yeah, it's, you know, these pilots have 
actually seen. They've actually things. captured these things on their on their radars, on their cameras, and right. Like, what other information are they holding back? Like, if we're able to see like uh, that kind of fact and that kind of proof, it's like, um, do you guys got more substantiating evidence? You know, like, yeah. What What are you holding back? Like, they keep saying that they're not releasing the full uh, information or. Um, files on you know that they have of uh, UAPs and stuff like that, and um, then they they have more that are like UAPs underwater and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know about that theory, which is what newer they're saying that aliens are in the water as opposed to coming from the sky and stuff. So yeah. I don't know if I you, I don't know don't know about aliens neither. I, I say aliens and stuff like that, but um, who I don't really know because. We have yet to talk to him, right? So, yeah. as far as we know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I figure that just the the craft that are caught on some of those military videos, um, to be able to endure the stresses in acceleration and you know, maneuvering that that they are that they must be able to endure. Why wouldn't they be able to be underwater? Mm -hmm. uh, probably quite at ease moving around in all kinds of. All kinds of environments right. um, that that's those are the things where i think the acceleration really doesn't look like anything a, a human could endure especially with the like thrusters and stuff like mm -hmm. that and and, and so like either it's unmanned or there's something that's not human mm -hmm. that's that's controlling it internally and um i, I would still lean towards unmanned <laughs> but the possibility absolutely exists. There's there's no way for me to say it doesn't exist. The possibility absolutely exists that it's something that's that's not human and, and not not terrestrial. Right? Aren't they like trying to uncover like older mathematics from like Egyptian times or something like that? And they're trying to say that maybe they had like a better mathematical um, like formula compared to us, and they were able to like figure out more stuff. Or maybe that's a key for us moving forward to and our technology and stuff like that too even i don't know how true that is i think it's like people like graham hancock or something like that were like making mention of it in like podcasts like um joe rogan's or something like that you know and it's like hmm that's, i don't know like uh, well they were kind of more so saying like they were incorporating like more of sounds going into it as opposed to like numbers and stuff so hmm. uh, it didn't make much sense to me so hmm. I'd, I'd be interested to to learn more about that but I, I know that we've historians peri periodically come to find that, oh, uh, such and such civilization or, or such and such person figure in history had figured out some mathematical concept that we attributed to someone like 300, 400, 500 years later. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, it was figured out by by you know, these people way, way before that right. and uh, just expressed in a way that is very different from what we might be looking for um, with our our current mathematical language and whatnot. Yeah, so, the, yeah, like weird stuff like them even having like uh, maps of Antarctica like hundreds of years before we even discovered it and yeah, stuff like that yeah. too. So or, I don't know, they discovered it, but we discovered it. We know how discoveries are in America, I yeah. guess. But <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, uh, I get to the second time because that was many years later. Okay, like uh, like a decade later, or uh, so I'd have to do the math here. 2015, 24, 2015. Okay, quite so this would be the this would be uh, late summer, early fall of twenty fifteen. Okay. So I have a question here. You yep. said that at the time of the first one, you didn't do alcohol or drugs or anything at the time. That's right. So did you have you done alcohol and drugs by the time? The second, the second encounter one, happened? But by, by the time of the second one, um, so I never drank a drop until I was 21. I, mm. I, I didn't see that as being like a nerve or square swear. or anything <laughs> like I just, I just didn't. And mm. then my, my, my first, um, my first, uh, beer was, was with my dad. He's like, Hey, you gotta have this beer. <laughs> we're at a restaurant somewhere. He's like, they got it on tap. It's really good. We're actually, we're at Bridget's cross here, <laughs> here in Bemidji. And, um, and so you know, those kind of things are, were special, but no, I, I've, I've, um, uh, never really drunk to excess. Um, uh, up, up to 2015, I had, I had smoked pot a couple times. Mm -hmm. Um, how was that experience for you? Mellow, no. okay. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but that's it. 
right? Mm-hmm. Um, like not even so much as needing to be on prescription painkillers or, or anything like that. Uh, uh, just had opted to be just a pretty healthy person with with uh, minimal vice, so to speak. Right, right. And you know, occasionally having having a drink, but never really being like, let's get. Black Black Dope, which is yeah. like that's the UND thing is like they're the, one of the number one drinking schools yeah. uh, in the nation or something. <laughs> something to be proud of guys <laughs> but, yeah but that was not something I, I ever I ever um, uh, kind of got sucked into or anything so right. um, no so even by 2015 um, uh, a, a pretty clean person and right. kind of my whole life been a just a pretty clean person I don't even drink now okay. like uh, um, yeah. So, uh, to kind of set the stage, 2015, and and at the at the specific time, like no, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't had any pot for a couple of years at that point, maybe. Okay. Um, and uh, I, since I had gone through a divorce, uh, a pretty frustrating separation, then divorce mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. Um, I had made the intentional choice to not drink at all because I recognized as a depressant uh, the potential to make everything really worse, make a bad situation worse. Right. Uh, so I wasn't drinking at that time either. That's usually where people get hooked at too, you know, like yeah. a fish. So. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I was I was at home and I was uh, out in my backyard. I had a fire ring and uh, had a buddy over. Uh, he hung out with me a lot during that time. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, I had, I had just recently met Amanda, mm-hmm. so like a month prior, month and a half prior, and uh, uh, I was just kind of getting to know her more and more, and I had my buddy over for for a little, little bonfire in the back, and was talking with him about life and uh, Amanda, who I was just uh, uh, really enjoying my time with, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, just visiting about all kinds of things, and I had a, a freestanding hammock in my backyard, and I I laid out on that uh, because the fire was a, a little bit a little bit too hot on my legs. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, he stayed uh, sitting right by the fire. And so to kind of describe the the setup, the backyard, the very back of the backyard faced east, mm-hmm. so the house would have been on the west side, and then there was a uh, residential road immediately to the south because uh, that that house was right on a corner lot okay. um, and so the hammock uh, I'm I'm laying so that my feet are pointing south my head is pointing north mm-hmm. and my my buddy who was there would be sitting on the south side of the fire ring with his back toward back facing south okay. so I can see the southern sky uh, and uh, he can't because his back is to it I gotcha. And the additional context, uh, my buddy, uh, love him very much. I think his doctor would describe him as morbidly obese. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so the difficulty of being able to respond when I said, mm-hmm. you've got to turn around and look at this right <laughs> now, uh, that like he, he kind of did the whole like, like, effort to rotate over. in the chair thing and he could not could not for the life of him get turned around <laughs> yeah. quickly enough to be able to see what I was seeing. Uh, so from the, from my first experience, like I said, it was low yeah. and it was moving very, very slowly. Um, and I couldn't wrap my mind around that. Right, right. Uh, uh, the second time, the way it started out was uh, I'm just kind of laying there and uh, there's a lull in our conversation and I could hear uh, prop from a plane, uh, so like a turbo prop, just a, mm-hmm. and there's a small a small airfield in Crookston, so there are there's some small amount of traffic. It's it's usually um, crop dusters during daytime and whatnot, but there is some That's small true. amount of of uh, light uh, prop aircraft travel. And UND students will do their some of their first cross country flights from Grand Forks to Crookston. Um, but uh, so I hear a prop plane, and I'm. I'm always looking for where's the plane Mm -hmm. and I I spot the plane. I can see the plane moving in the sky and then my eyes kind of scan back because I'm just laying back. So it's like south west of me Mm -hmm. and I kind of lay back again 
And then I see coming from the east, my yeah. three dots, my three oh. red dots. Oh, man. And this time it's small, small in the sky and it's moving like this Super all <laughs> the way across the sky. And I don't know if you've ever seen a supersonic aircraft fly past before you heard it. Oh, yeah. They had some jets around here flying here um, a few months back. But I don't know. It's, they're, they were fast, too. Yeah, like... like you don't hear them until they go by. Yeah, most people never see a supersonic aircraft. They just hear the boom once it passes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was waiting for. Because like I've seen supersonic aircraft pass by. And my first thought when I saw it was, if that is the same thing that I saw, it is moving fast. Way too fast. Like really, really fast. Because I'm seeing it. It's like this big instead of like a football field. Right, right. right. And just across the sky and so i waited i'm like first I, I i told my told my buddy i'm like you gotta get up like look it's it's because it. i had, i had told him he was one of my closest friends i had told him about what i had seen years prior mm -hmm. um and uh and i just started like man get up turn around look 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 <laughs> and uh and he's he's not he's not able to get up not able to not able to turn his body yeah he doesn't see anything <laughs> and it just just across the sky and then i said okay just wait listen like moving that fast there's going to be Some a time. sonic boom and it's like it's got to be within a couple seconds mm -hmm. and it never came <laughs> that sucks man and uh that that was even crazier because like i said the first time was low and slow and the yeah. second time was high and fast and fast enough that i was positive there would have to be a sonic boom Heck yeah. and there wasn't hey. and and that time it was just the the three red dots no no spotlight just but it was moving so fast uh, that yeah, if it was smaller and lower, mm -hmm. then there would have been an earlier sonic boom. <laughs> like there's all these things that they don't they don't make sense. Right, like right. If it was as big as what I saw before, then it had to be really far away. <laughs> and if it was smaller than what I saw before, then it had to be lower. Mm. And you know, either way, where was the sound? Right. Where was the sound? It had it had to make some noise. Right. And it, it just never did. So. And um, that uh yeah that blew my mind again Jeez. and then like i said i was just so frustrated because i had my buddy right there with me and like just turn around man. <laughs> <Right. laughs> just turn around Jeez. and i don't think i'd ever been that frustrated like if if someone else could just see the same thing as me and reconfirm it yeah know? and be like yeah you're not you're not seeing things i saw that too yeah. uh, i can't remember what radio station when i worked at walmart eight nine years ago every night we would the old ladies would get mad, uh, old ladies in the surrounding area because i worked pets and stuff like that with some uh elder gentleman named kurt uh but he was he was balls deep in the alien stuff too and well uh, whatnot so he got me into this uh i think it was like 1350 with george nor and he'd always like interview people with uh alien uh, experiences and he talked to government people too that had um experiences as well and they knew people that had the same type of experiences you know it's like oh man uh, but uh, I, I i don't think they're up anymore i don't know if he's still on the airwaves or anything like that mm -hmm. i haven't really checked i guess neither but um they had some insane stuff um, you know they always they talk about like triangles and then a lot of it's like saucers but uh, the reason why I didn't like to talk about like, the fire one is because I'd never really heard about fire the fire ones as much, you know, and until you said something to me and then I'm like, oh, well, okay, I'm not super crazy. Either, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and then it was like, I also had some drone experience uh, recently too. I don't know if we want to, uh, we can have those as UAPs, but I just, I checked that up more as like, as drone stuff, you know, like, I don't know. It was the first one I, had, I I brought up to you, I think I had a conversation with you here recently too, was like, um, it was right on the highway there, right after that um, uh, that roundabout. And yeah. I just went straight up. I had one red light and had a, uh, a white light too, but uh, it didn't have like a front light or anything like that. And then it was moving, uh, I was going about 65 at, at the time when I seen it go up and start going. And then I sped up to 70. 70, which is the my standard on the highway there yeah. is mm -hmm. go about 70 and uh it was staying not only was staying with me but it was weaving in and out of the tree line going oh, back wow. and forth and then i was like what the heck at nighttime with no like no headlight yeah, thing yeah. i was like 
I don't know if this is possible, but maybe it was, I, I, I thought it was a drone like being manned by somebody, but it went pretty far. So it went from behind, uh, after that roundabout to uh, right before um, Lazy Jack's there and it veered off to the left. It went shot out to the field there and it continued that, um, down that way. And I was like, what the heck? And stuff like that. I remember I was telling Matt about it. He's like, oh man, I think they're after you, man. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm serious. I seen something, dude. And then like, uh, a week later, two weeks later, maybe, um, I was walking on break at 11 o'clock break because we take a break at 11. And I get to right before the cul de sac there, and I, I just turn, I just I do small loops, but at lunch, yeah. I don't take really long loops or whatever. But uh, I, I'm looking down at my phone and I'm walking, and then I see a light right, right at the tree line start. I'm like, heck. So I see this thing, it's a light. It, it came down from uh, the tree line, like we came from the tree line came down about the same level as the lights there and it went in between all four of the lights and then like shut off but you could still see the silhouette of the the thing it, was, it didn't seem that big and then it, i seen it like take off and i was like these guys like it wasn't like okay so we got those four lights there it probably went right about here i see in in, in between but it's probably yeah. about a uh, one fourth of the way there when the light went off uh, and then it, it, it took off. It didn't even make a noise or anything like that. Wow, that's was, wild. That, yeah, for being that super, you know, super close. And then those guys that were smoking over there past this light, I was like, you guys see any weird things or anything? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, just being, trying to be calm when I was walking by. And yeah. like, oh, no, we're just talking. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I'm not going to say that. They're going to think I'm weird and uh, I'm trying to scare them or something here at daytime, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, Man, that's wild. Right. No, that, that's... Uh... I, uh, Amanda, I don't know. She, I think she puts up with a lot from me, but like, I'm always, I wonder if I'm going to, you know, can, I'm just going to go out and, and stare at this guy for a while and, and see if I, see if I spot anything. Just it's like, I don't know. After, you know, after the second time, uh, that I, that I saw, uh, the, the UAP I saw, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I want to see it again so I can maybe collect a little more data to figure out how's this working what's make, make going on sense. here like maybe the more times i can see it, and like i don't i don't care whether or not i ever catch it on video like that'd be that'd be neat that'd be handy to or prove have, to other people have somebody like, see while they're with you, you know? yeah like, but for, for me like as is the case for most things in life i just want to understand what i just saw mm -hmm. and uh if i see something i I, I say this all the time. Like if I see something and I don't know how it works, mm. I want to know how it works. And that's why I, I, I like hate magic shows and, and so, so much is like, I know they're never going to explain to me how, how it all works. And I know it all makes perfect sense when it's explained. I know that there's nothing, there's nothing actually magical uh, to it, but it's, it's the same kind of thing where, where um, I know it's not like pixie dust. Mm. It works through some, mechanism through some means what i saw works somehow mm -hmm. I mean, it exists but how? so it has to work somehow mm -hmm. and how is it that it's working and like i i have to know and so i don't care whether or not it's alien or made by you know, other humans like none of that right. it, that's like peripheral like it'd be cool if it's made by aliens it'd be cool if some humans have already figured this out mm -hmm. uh I want to know how it works. Right. I want to, and even if it's not something I could ever possibly build or whatever, like I just want to understand how it works. Right. We just, it comes like with a lot of like the governments being like uncovered and stuff like that. It's like, dude, just tell us, let us know. People want to know. And you yeah. know, like maybe if you guys can't figure it out still, you know, like, gosh, that, that'd be a good question to like, get everybody's eyes and ears on, especially yep. if they're interested yep. in that thing. You never know. It might be some some weird on the streets that crack a code or something. You just, yeah. you just never know. So yeah, some wealthy tech bros in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in California were like, "Hey, let's let's build this." Yep. Everyone's going to be so so confused about it. It's, it'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we don't have to put our doobies away. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, um, like because they have. But I talked to Matt too, and they talked about how they had like a special place in like the mountains where they would try to watch for like activities and stuff like that. And um, you, you may mention that it happens over here quite often, especially like the balls of fire. But also here in like Cass Lake, they they wait out there too because I talked to Alonzo, and he he has like 
uh, some information kind of like that too, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, get that guy, he's, he's like, he's really uh, knowledgeable about like conspiracy theories and stuff. Yeah. He's well, oh, man, Alonzo knows, knows a lot. Yes. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to work with him when I did. So, Heck yeah. yeah, I've been trying to get him to come on, but he's like, oh, no, no. yeah. Well, he's he's got he's got some he's got some really wild accounts from his military days. I don't know if if that's something he would open up about yeah, with you, but like sure. really, really uh, wild stories that are that are just like wow. That's but that's that's for him to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. It, it'd be it'd be cool if he did because because right. yeah, I, I think you'd really enjoy that. I'd enjoy hearing more more about his stuff. Like we could only ever talk about what, what we had the time to be able to, to get something in. <laughs> right. uh, so just brief stories here and there. But yeah, yeah. I'm like I always was, I'll walk by and I'm like, hey man, you can always just share a little bit of it. You know, <laughs> I'm like it's always interesting, dude. I'm telling you, but yeah. uh, you, you 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 watch all these podcasts because he's always like, oh, did you see this podcast? whatever they're talking about this and i'm like yo man we can make a podcast <laughs> you know so I'm, I'm just i'm not trying to pressure him or anything yeah. like that it's just like it's i i think people should hear it and it's, it's really cool stuff to hear even so yeah oh, man. it's i i guess i look at it as a way of if i wasn't doing a podcast and i just like podcasts i'd want to hear something like that you know so and i'm like yeah, but I can't pressure him at the same time. So yeah. it's his stories or his life experiences and stuff. Too. Yeah. So, and yeah, it was like, oh man. Well, because what made me more fascinated about it too was like, he explains like some of the culture shifts that he faced with like his families. And it, re- like, it relates with my family when I see how they were like 9 11 happened, right? And when everybody's like, oh, they're bad people. And then um, when they're trying to get, uh, pull the troops out or when they're coming back then they're like these are bad people these are baby killers even though they were like uh congratulating patting them on the back when they were going and stuff like that and there's like just because like some political viewpoint told them the, that they're bad people they decided mm-hmm. to, yeah. that they're bad people too and i i don't agree with that kind of stuff too. yeah so, oh man i i don't like getting too much into politics because um i don't know i don't like picking sides myself i'd like you got. You should call it bullshit, regardless of if you're red or blue or green yeah, or yeah. whatever. You know. And no, that's right. No, I think I, I uh, you had a you did a reaction video to. Um, oh, was it the the history of the KKK? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and um, I watched I watched that and I was like, yeah, that's. I mean, there were there were some bits that I didn't know about, but a lot that I did, mm-hmm. and then I left my comment about like the the southern strategy and, and the flip and everything that happened like why, why it is that today uh there's things are so different mm-hmm. and but the the sentiment was like you can't place your faith in parties because parties change ideologies change like you got to be looking at at the actual behaviors of people mm-hmm. and you know are, are these is this the kind of person that that um is going to try and lift up humanity and lift up everyone they encounter the kind of person who's just looking out for themselves and mm-hmm. and uh and just making their way through life with with only one person in mind and like then then it doesn't matter like yeah. if it, what whatever someone's political ideology is if you can if yeah. you can zero in on just that they care about people and uh, they they don't just care about themselves like they actually care about other people and right. and they're trying to do the right thing and maybe in their, they've determined that the right thing is more closely aligned with this ideology, or maybe it's more closely aligned with this ideology. But at least they're trying to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like, hey, mm-hmm. welcome them all. Like, <laughs> those are good people to know. But oh, yeah. but uh, people who are just like ideologues, that's a different matter. Especially when they like become like radical and stuff yeah. like that. You're willing to hurt somebody else just because of some beliefs. And mm-hmm. like, if you sat down and talked with them, you might even be closer than you even imagine, yeah. you know? And it's like, man, this, that's stupid. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, even like family members pushing family members away and like disowning them in a sense. And it's like, mm-hmm. for what? Because your yeah. politician said that they should, that they're racist if they think they like somebody else or something, you know, or, they're just they're stupid like they're because they like joe biden or whoever you know it's like <laughs> yeah. i don't know it, it's not that easy it's not that black and white you know and, yeah oh man it's it's just crazy <laughs> oh man 
I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm I think I'm a weirdo, but then I also think other people are more weird. Think of their normal, <laughs> call me weird, you know. So it's like I don't know. Like you, we were talking about earlier, and you're like, we're all weird, right? So we're all just weird in different ways yep. and stuff. So. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it's been it's been really cool. Like I I think I've told you I worked a, many years in IT and I was like working solo, and so you don't get to don't get to uh, hear a lot of people's stories and interact with a lot of people, and mm -hmm. and and it's been really refreshing to work in a very different environment, very different capacity, and to get to know the kind of diverse group of people in different ways, Absolutely. and yeah, you find out like. People are pretty cool, <laughs> Just, and like everyone's got their their weird thing. But then, if everyone has their weird thing, then it's just like everyone has their special thing, right? Mm -hmm. And they're just whatever that that um, sets them apart in some really cool and interesting way. Absolutely. And uh, that just makes I don't know. It just makes getting to know people that much more interesting. Absolutely. I was like, um, are they happy? With them? That's all that matters, you know. As long as they're happy, who cares? Yeah. If it's weird to you. It's normal to those guys. Yeah. Oh uh, man. But like, I don't know. I, I'm gonna word stuff too like that. So I mean, like you said, it's better to be around people and getting to know them because uh, a few years of my life there, I was just trying to get away from everybody and just be alone, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. So that's. Yeah, you know, this, this job's been awesome. Like, they bring up a bunch of people with different, like, backgrounds and stuff like that. Like, a buddy from, like, Pakistan, and he's, uh, what is he, a uh, Muslim and stuff like that. And it's like, I never really uh, got to talk to anybody that was, like, Muslim and had a different belief system and grew up differently than I had, mm, you know? Yeah. Um, well, not, not to that in-depth that I thought of, I guess, neither, I guess. Uh, when I was a kid, I grew up with some some people, but I never really got to know them like that, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. you know them for a year and then that's it. <laughs> you move on to a different grade or something like that. So, uh, I don't know, but I think growing up in a diverse place in like a city is compared to like a rural, rural place. I can't even say that word, but, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit better in accepting how other people think too. In mm, a way. Yeah. So, but, uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Because some cities have like their own, you know, some some racism going on too. But mm -hmm. maybe it's this place state too. At the same time, I like to think that in this this year that uh, 2023 that there ain't really racist people. It's just people mad or pissed off about something and blaming other people. Yeah, finding finding some some way to blame someone else. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh man, you got any plans uh, this weekend? Oh, Just you know, what? this is this is the first weekend in in a really long time where I'm really able to just relax or dig into personal projects or whatnot. Because mm -hmm. it's been uh, my daughter was with me all summer, and it it was just go 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 all the time, like trying to every weekend maximize the time that I had with her Absolutely. and uh, uh, just make the summer fun and positive and happy for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then during the week, you know, it's it's work, and then you get back from work in the in the evening, and it's, it's spend time with my daughter, spend time with Amanda, and yeah. and uh, uh, just all of my time got sucked up. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now this is the like I said, the first weekend in a very long time that. I just got like nothing going on. Right, right. <laughs> I'm feeling healthy. <laughs> like, uh, I was that sick, sick last, last weekend. Right? right. And, uh, and yeah, just, I'm feeling good. And, and, uh, I got time and okay. that's, I don't know, so endless possibilities. What, what kind of projects well, are you into then? Like what kind of stuff are you into that you're looking forward to doing? Uh, I, I have some personal programming computer programming projects mm -hmm. uh to work on but i also have one that's uh tied back to work mm -hmm. um that i just want to kind of move forward i have some some ideas for for something that, that might be of of use and i figured i'd just go ahead and try and flesh it out um well, i'm sure they'll appreciate it <laughs> you know, if, if i can make it work uh right, right. and uh yeah like that's i do nerdy stuff like that uh awesome. and I, I like there are a lot of a lot of books that i have to read uh mm -hmm that I own to read and not that I have to read. Right. <laughs> uh, and like, I read a lot of science fiction, uh, um, like golden age science fiction. Um, and, uh, maybe I'll do some of that. Um, maybe I'll do some programming. I, I might get my bike out and go ride. Mm -hmm. uh, we, 
Amanda and I went for a, a short ride today, yeah. uh, a couple miles. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. It just feels good to get out and, and get, get the heart rate up. And Absolutely. Yeah. I, I got to finish Eli's book. I started that thing, and uh, I got to finish it. Anyway. So it was, it's pretty good so far, but uh, I feel bad for his mailman there. Right, Eli? It's good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty good so far. I mean, I'd recommend it, especially when it was on sale, because I got it like, for five bucks or yeah. something like that. But. Um, and it's that uh, Legion, Legion of Monsters. Legion of Monsters, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that was a that was a, a cool chat you had with Eli. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, if, he, if he's watching, Eli, that was neat. So, glad you did that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Shared uh, your Bigfoot experience and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it very much and stuff like that. So, um, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, like, I like the Bigfoot stuff too. I mean, because it's, it's, like, it runs rampant in um, uh, native lore, but so do like aliens and stuff like that. That's why I don't really like discredit uh, aliens because yeah. there's an ideology from um, some of the native teachings that they pass down to us and stuff like that through uh, ceremonies and stuff like that. Mm. Um, they they get a bad like a bad rap because of the boarding school era saying that it was like witchcraft and stuff like oh, that yeah. and like there's a lot of names i almost got in fist fights over the years because they're telling me that i practice witchcraft it's like well you don't really know unless if you're a part of that i know it's not witchcraft <laughs> you know it's, yeah. it's 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 a lot of praying and see, singing and like um trying to give back to the uh, the earth in a way you know what i mean mm-hmm. and stuff like that and uh, yeah maybe they do have some uh, natives out there that practice like a witchcraft or something, but uh, that way of life doesn't, you know. Um, yeah. Not that I've seen otherwise, because it's always praying for like uh, well beings of others and stuff like that. And it's also like don't force religion on other people because there ain't mm-hmm. religions that's subjective, right? Or uh, it's it's up to the individual to believe in what they want. To yeah. In, you can't force them. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. But they they talk about how um, like aliens or like us from. Like the future and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know how true that is, or if I really even um, believe that. I guess, but it's 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 something that's been passed on for a reason. Like you know, like I don't know how they would have gotten like that information, but they always talked about like how God would talk to them and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And, um, uh, the reason why like our people saying is because that um, it replicates the voice of the uh, Creator when he he spoke to the people all those times back. Uh, before there was time, time, right? Yeah. And before we kept t- time, stuff like that. So it, it's very interesting stuff. And this is stuff that you don't read about in like books, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. um, I kind of didn't appreciate it when I was younger, stuff like that, until I got obviously older now. I'm remembering some parts of it as a kid. And I'm like, man, I should have sat there and listened <laughs> instead of playing in the mud. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, I would. I, I wanted to like before my like like the grand chief passed away and stuff like that it would have been cool to like have him in an interview but they didn't like recording a lot of that stuff because they believe that it's sacred knowledge mm-hmm. and that it would like devalue it if you were to record it and like try to uh, get it out there but or monetize uh, yeah. it in a way mm-hmm. so people are like uh, it doesn't mean nothing because because you're not willing to go out and find that information essentially but no. I don't know I think it's different like uh, if you if you don't want to share it it's just going to die right it mm. might never get passed on to anybody and then it loses its value that way mm-hmm. because now nobody knows what the hell yeah no, I, I know that's a, a big um, a big hurdle for people who study um, ethnobotany uh, ethnomycology it's fungus mm-hmm. um, trying to because you have to first build the trust of a community before you can uh, get people to be able to share that that um, uh, uh, kind of community knowledge uh, about the plants and and other things and like any kind of knowledge where where there's uh, a lot of emphasis on oral traditions and uh, uh, passing along sacred knowledge to to people who are part of the uh, part of the community like it's it's really rough to for people who are just like we just want to preserve this knowledge <laughs> and like well maybe the community wants to preserve it in a very specific way right well i mean they, they were also facing prosecution like 70 years ago you know mm-hmm. 
boarding schools were still kind of operating. Yeah. Um, like my grandpa was a boarding school. He died 59. He died when I was 16, so that was like 2007. So, I mean, he wasn't that old. And it was like some people think of boarding schools and they think of hundreds of years ago. Or yeah, and it wasn't ago. that long ago. Like, not that long ago. And um, it was crazy stuff, too. And people being brainwashed and stuff like yeah. that. And, uh, getting killed for speaking like native language and stuff like yeah. that, and uh, like I can see why, like, because that culture, uh, that that culture, that religion, um, I know why they would think that way and why they would feel that way because they, in a way, they're still like in a sense they're still thinking they're facing gonna face prosecution if they do, you know, mm-hmm. or if they they speak out about it or something like that. And yeah, I don't I don't think they should keep that mindset anymore, but. You know, you can't force anybody to do anything. Yeah, that's a critical thing, and um, I just I think that because um, they're always like, we want to grow, grow our religion and um, share it with the world type stuff, mm-hmm. but only native people. And it's like, how's that the world and stuff mm-hmm. like that? Yeah, and, you know, sometimes sharing it with everybody is really what's going to help it live on. You know, mm-hmm. so it's I don't know. I, I think they're kind of, uh, a lot of people are starting to come through though because you see a lot more like they got like Ros- uh, Rosetta Stones uh, yeah. starting to do like some of the native languages and stuff like that and, which will suck if we ever need code talkers again but <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's also beautiful at the same time to help uh, give people that uh, opportunity to yeah. learn their language and stuff mm-hmm. so yeah no there's um uh uh, an e- educator, I'm sure he's more than an educator, James uh, Vukelich. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the last name, but uh, he was doing, uh, I think he's a Min- Minnesotan, and he was doing videos pretty regularly where, where he would just do like a daily, here's a, uh, here's a, I think it was all like Anishinaabe word and, and the how it would be sp- spelled in, in the character set that's, that's used, not, not in the, uh, I say Romanized or Latin character set, but but rather how, how it would actually be spelt okay. uh, and um, kind of breaking down the words and how to pronounce it and here's what it means and here are the individual parts and what it means and everything. It's like neat, neat stuff like that to be able to, to go find and like that there are you know, educators who are are making making things, even just like bite-sized things accessible to people who otherwise would like, well, what, what are the resources? How, how would I, how would I go learn more about this? How would I go, right. um, just learn anything, uh, to even start to just kind of poke around in, in that culture and that, you know, vast culture really. And right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's any way to, any way to kind of <laughs> get people interested and preserve stuff and, and, and draw people in is, I don't know, I think it's good. It's Absolutely. And the, uh, I don't know. I, even though, like, the, I just re- reacted to a Navajo channel here recently, and they were talking about, like, the time of prophecy being upon us and stuff like that. And I, I think stuff like that's interesting, and I like how, the, like, they're coming out, too. So, like, maybe this is the flip time when they start to do that. Um, I guess that kind of touches on the aliens, too, because they were saying that uh, when we start making the convergence towards that, uh, it's when we get rid of spirituality and make the switch. And uh, we, we pick uh, technology over spirituality is uh, more of where the end times go. And it ties more into like that, those teachings of uh, there being like aliens and stuff like that. Because uh, technology technology destroy us in that, in that time period. And that's like, their theory is like, they, they're coming back and looking at themselves in, in a sense, you know. But they don't really ever interfere or anything like that. So... Uh, well, I, I got it. That's on my watch. My watch list. My watch list is always too long, but right. it's it's, uh, it's uh, um, that's it's when you posted that. I thought, oh man, I, I got to watch this. I don't know anything about this this uh, this native prophecy. Like, I want to I want to know more about this. But um, yeah, there's uh, I mean, there's there's I always want to learn everything. You, you, there's not enough time in anyone's life to learn everything, but I always want to learn everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you learn it, you're going to freaking forget about it anyway. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, oh, man. Like, I don't know. Like, so, some things I learned, and I'm like, hey, man, I remember them teaching me that in like third grade or something. And I'm like, how did I forget about this stuff? It's awesome, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, even when I just trip down with Maddie, and I was like, they brought us here in elementary when I was a kid. How did I. 
how do I forget that they uh, took some uh, the underground tunnels under this uh, uh, the <laughs> waterfall and stuff like that? Which is freaking awesome, you know. And, yeah. Uh, I was like third grade or something like that. And I was like, I just I only remember because of uh, how that downstairs looked and when they let let us down there on our school trip. And stuff yeah. Like that. And, oh man, that's cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, some, some big old fishes fish over there, though, eating that polluted <laughs> water. I was like, oh, that's that good. Did I show you the video of that? Uh, I, I, well, I watched a video of you walking through the tunnel, uh, but uh, didn't uh, didn't see anything about fish. I got, I got some per, uh, personal videos I just left. Um, I didn't want to post them on there. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's only a few seconds. It's some big old, like, we're out 10 feet, and these they must be like carp or something. Like, they're big as crap, and I'm like, that thing's bigger than my face. <laughs> it's like, I'm just sitting there, like, eating that pollution in there. Oh, I'm like, that's not man. good. <laughs> The people eat these things? Like, you, know, <laughs> you see some of those Asian people out there fishing for those and stuff, like the yeah. melons and stuff like that. Oh, wild. Right. <laughs> Catch them with bear heads. <laughs> but, uh, man, like, uh, some of the Hmong stuff, they, got, they have some good histories, too. I remember, like, I, I used to get along well with, like, Asian people down in the cities, because I'm, I'm part Korean from my grandma. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she she told us, like, a lot of Korean stories when I was a kid, too, not that I remember too many of them, but <laughs> um, stuff like that. So I always liked the Asian stuff, Japanese, uh, Chinese type stuff, too, so. But it's always <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you said, I just want to know all the stuff, but as soon as you learn something else, it's like something else gets forgotten. Yeah, too, so. yeah. Oh man, uh, I appreciate you coming on here, Philip. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was, it's been fun. So, Heck yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to have you on any time. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be about some uh, UAP stuff. Like, <laughs> you don't have to do cool stuff with it. <laughs> um, I do. I appreciate you coming on. Here, so. yeah, yeah, this has been fun. I, I think said I've, I've wanted to to at least be able to chat with you out, outside of work for for a while. So, so it's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, doors always open. Um, or on my desk because we yeah, I don't have a door, but <laughs> <laughs> you got to get an employee intro. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, with with or without recordings or anything like that. Anytime, yeah, man, I'm down. She, cool, cool. Heck yeah. Um, well, uh, it, thanks everybody for tuning in. If you're new here, please hit that like and subscribe button. I do appreciate it. Um, uh, Philip, did you have any like plugs that people can find you or anything like that? <laughs> no, 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 I don't really do social media or anything. I got you. So, but but you should you should watch this channel. <laughs> so. You want to see a weirdo? So yeah. <laughs> I'll be here. <laughs> this is good. But um, you don't do like Facebook or anything? Either? No, 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 I don't. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. YouTube and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I hope you guys have a great night and um, uh, enjoy this. Dope ass conversation with my boy here, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good.